I am the Innovation Officer at eLife. Everything in these slides is online. I tweeted it, it's on the Slack channel. I'm going to skip a section at the end so I don't have time, um, but you can feel free to read my notes on the Google slides and take yourself through that presentation. Uh, and it's a bit more meta about how as an organization I think eLife are really working to make the value that we're building more sustainable. Um, but with this talk, I'm just going to go through some of the products we've been working on, some of the thoughts we've been having, and pick out just some some elements. So eLife is a uh, non-profit organization funded by these four research funders at the bottom uh, with a mission to help scientists accelerate discovery, which we do by operating a platform for research communication, an open access journal for the life sciences. Um, and we've also got a mandate to innovate to really drive forward best uh, practices in research, uh, specifically with the life sciences. You can see some of the things we're doing by following our blog, eLife Labs. Um, uh, but today I got asked to talk about sustainability and when Rania first emailed me this I was like mm, I've got nothing to offer here, what do you mean? Um, and he was like no no, you, look, what, what about these things? So I thought okay I'm going to a dictionary um, and not thinking about software and just thinking more about okay how do we make, how do we maintain value through a system? How do we, how do we make our work say sustainable and how do we make research, uh, how, the, how do we get the value of research to be sustainable? Uh, so there's two perspectives, and I'm going to deal with this first one in the way research is shared, um, and uh, my slides go on to talk about the work we do. Please feel free to read them. So sustainability in sharing research, how do we communicate research in a way that maintains its value as it goes from researcher to reader? Um, and if we're asking people to make changes to their behaviours uh, in order to do this, how can we make that change sustainable for lots of different stakeholders? Um, and I was thinking about the sort of things that we deal with and actually the approaches we take when we're trying to improve uh, practices as people come to us as a publisher or support projects that are helping people to document their data better or their code better. And really, I was trying to see a common theme and I thought that actually things I tend to think about are how do we help uh, the researchers do these things by capitalising the work they've already done. You know, there's value in the system already that gets lost at the moment as it gets to the publisher. So what can we do to, to keep that value? And also, what can we do to make sure that we capture everything uh, at the right time to provide enough detail to the next person so people can understand what's been done and to build on that work? Uh, and basically, this comes back to the fact that actually what we need are ways of sharing that really accelerate discovery uh, without costing too much more effort. Um, so one example to share, uh, last year we worked with Adrian Magda and Joe Barrett from Open Knowledge International just to look at the data sets that are being shared with eLife. So this is specifically to do with data sets that are shared as supplementary files, not ones that are put in external repositories, uh, because that's what we could extract from our dump of article XMLs, or rather what Adria could. Um, uh, that's gone. Do you want to hear? Right. through their, their open tool good tables, which looks at structural uh, reusability, and it's very, it's got very high bar uh, setting for ma machine readable, machine readability of data sets. And if you do that with life sciences data sets, uh, three quarters of the, the articles have some kind of error that comes up, um, which are mainly to do with how the data has extra rows or missing, missing cells. Uh, but if you actually look at the data, it may not be that clear on a slide. You can maybe get from this, this is a real data set at the top and one that I've reformatted into a second way on the bottom. Uh, but a, good, a machine readable data set would have single uh, column headers, unique column headers and no, no blank rows in between to separate them and no missing cells. But actually a lot of uh, researchers and myself included when I was a neuroscientist would probably actually put their data in an Excel spreadsheet in a way that they'd like to read it. And that makes a lot of sense to a human. And we're not really judging as to which is better here, but what we're saying is what we found is that shared data is often not machine readable. Um, and what can we do to try to take the value that the author's already got and making it very clear for a human and not losing that kind of format, but also then maybe to help automate how we can turn that into a machine readable form so that the reusers get really frustrated that they have to wrangle this data, actually have a, a format available that's more easily reusable from the start. But before we do any of that, the first question that we're asking right now is, do we need the data set to be machine readable? We're asking all, uh, researchers right now, what do you do when you download these data sets? What do you actually do? Do you just look at them and you see some gene numbers and like, that, that might be all that's needed? So we don't want to put work into something that may not be needed at this point. 
So moving on to another project that we're working on. Uh, since September, we've been working with Substance, who are also working with Stencilla, on the reproducible document stack project, which is effectively trying to bring together data and code into the narrative so that we can leverage the processes that use XML and research publishing uh, to make sure that that content is all in one place and readable going forward. Um, which obviously, <laughs> getting to re reusability, I'd like to say there's a difference here between readability and reusability, and I think they're both really important for sustainability, and there's very different requirements. Uh, um, but we're, what we're trying to do as a minimum is to make sure that these, these assets are very readable um, and are preserved, um, and that you can download them in a bundle. And so if you're interested in what that bundle will be, there's a draft man manifest up on GitHub at the moment, uh, and the team substance, Michael and Oliver, really appreciate any feedback that you might have. Um, uh, and we want people to be able to download that bundle so they can reuse it locally. Um, and Sensilla really offers us that ability to have an authoring workflow. That means that researchers don't need to know that they're creating this kind of package as they're writing, but also when it gets to the publisher, it might be able to offer some kind of online interactivity and executability for the reader before they commit to downloading and doing more. It makes it much more accessible to people who, don't, who aren't very entrenched in these kind of reproducibility initiatives right now, because they can just play around with their browser, experience something, do some small things. Uh, so we're really trying to bring this reproducibility to a much wider audience um, and give it pride of place in, in research communication, which is what it should have. Um, you can sign up for updates on this project via that link. Uh, there should be an email going out soon, not that I've written it yet, so maybe, maybe a few weeks. Um, <laughs> uh, and that brings me on to the last thing I want to talk about, which is long-term preservation of research code, which, was it Mike from JISC earlier this morning? Where are you? Hello, can I speak to you? <laughs> I'd like to speak to you about what you're doing. Uh, thank you. Um, so if we're thinking about these reproducible documents, we get to a point, okay, well, how do we archive this? Well, hang on a second, how do we, how do we archive research code right now? Um, and different journals have different ways of doing this, depending perhaps on their community and what their community wants. Um, so since last year, we've been forking software that are on online repositories to our own GitHub repository, because that offers us a way to be in control of the process and to snapshot those repositories at the time of publication. Um, it's not an archive. It also doesn't deal with uh, the code files that we get shared with us as supplementary files. We haven't got a way to archive those at this, at this point. So we've been investigating what do the researchers want to do? Like, you know, th theoretically, 10 years time, you come to an article, you'd like to know uh, what, what code was used, what methodology was used to reach those results. Um, but what would you like to know about it? Like, and that's, that's kind of the point, that would be the minimum requirement for an archive, because you're not going to be using the archive to reuse the code, you're going to be using it to look back at 10-year-old stuff. Um, so we've asked this question, and we thought that, <laughs> you know, 10-year-old code, no one's, does anyone really care? But no, apparently they do want to do everything. So you want to be able to read the code, you want to be able to download and reuse it so you can validate what that 10-year-old article was saying. You also want to be able to go to the latest version so you can reuse the current methodology in your own project. Um, and you're probably going to find this from the papers that are describing the code um, or using the code, but also it would be really nice if it was in some kind of online directory to make it really easy to search through lots of things and not go direct to articles all the time. Um, so this gives us a lot of base requirements for different levels of software archiving. You might want to call it archiving plus, I and mean, there's a lot more in this. Um, and I'd really love to get some feedback from people here. We are. The people in the room here, I was having a discussion with some of you yesterday, it's definitely an expert audience, and it's definitely a whole group of other researchers who have very different requirements to you, but I would really love your expert feedback on these requirements. Um, there's an open Google Doc right there. Please, please go to it. Um, uh, we've got lots of questions in mind. Um, there are some solutions we're aware of. We know Software Heritage is looking to develop uh, a solution for research code. Um, we know that plenty of journals have a Sonodo mechanism, but that doesn't give us control, so you know, can we help to make that Sonodo mechanism something that other journals might like to use? Um, how do we satisfy, satisfy the, the important requirements here sensibly and also sustainably so that the value we can create in the process that we develop now can be shared with other people and developed going forward to continue to meet the community's needs? Um, and this is where I say that yeah, this is the bit. Oh, I didn't update. Okay. Um, preview of the bit online. Okay, brilliant. So there's a whole section online about I've, I'd like to explore the sustainability in the way that we do the work we do and how I think it's really important, basically, that the, 
products and solutions that we as a community develop remove barriers to communication um, and that we work in collaborations that build an open and interoperable ecosystem that's stronger than the sum of all of its parts I mean that we are supporting each other to build that ecosystem and so our own industry is, is sustainable. Um, uh, and I've just waffled on about my own perspectives but I'd like to throw the question back out to you. Do you agree? Do you think uh, that all I've covered are important points in the way that research is like keeping the way research is shared uh, sustainable um, and the way we do our work? I'd love to have discussions with people about this. I'm around until the end of tomorrow and very open to talking and discussing with you all. Thank you very much for listening.